Uh, my winner, I'm actually going to get, and I'm so, so damn tired of seeing this on draft day. I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles, who once again, you know, Howie Roseman is called a genius by so many people. Everyone's always calling him a, a brilliant drafter. And I, I have to acknowledge, you know, he does a great job on draft night. But at the same time, it's like, okay, you have these superstars falling to you every single year. I think Howie Roseman just does the, the obvious thing in the room and says, oh, you know what, Jalen Carter is really good. Maybe we should move up a, a pick, a spot here and go get him. Like that that guy, that I think that guy's going to be good, the number one rated prospect. And it, it's just been a few years of this now where you look at the draft board and all of a sudden Philly's on the clock. You go, how, how the hell is that guy still there? And they do the right thing by taking him. And this year, that wound up being a pick 22 Quinion Mitchell, the corner cornerback out of Toledo, who a lot of people, you know, it started off as Terry and Arnold being the number one cornerback, but a lot of people wound up flipping that and putting Mitchell as their number one cornerback in the class. I just, I, I, I couldn't believe. I was doing reaction videos, and my dad's just like, "Oh, Eagles took Mitchell." I was like, "You gotta be kidding me!" Like, how do they continue to to get away with this? And then on day two, they go, they go ahead, trade up, and get Cooper DeGene as well. So for for the Eagles who are, are aging in the secondary with Bradbury and Slay, struggled a lot last year. Now, the rest of the draft was fine, but I'm really looking at those first two picks to walk away with two of the top five cornerbacks in the draft when, when really they shouldn't have even been there. I uh, potentially even not even be there for the first pick. I thought I thought Philly walked away a huge winner with the, the secondary. I mean, especially DeGene at a, at, a, at 40, 40 in the yeah. second round. I mean, he was all of our pick a couple weeks back to be the, the Packers pick at, what, 25? Yeah. And then I remember I... Uh, I brought up the fact that I loved um, the kid from the Quinny and Mitchell as well as potential Packers pick at 25, but was like, no way he's going to be there. Oh, we thought he'd be gone at 12 or 13. Yeah. Like in my eyes, he's the best corner in the draft and DeGene's probably third behind uh, second or third and a secondary who was pretty bad last year. Defense took a huge hit. They get two good young corners in spots that they probably shouldn't have fallen to. Feels like an Eagles thing. This is an A-plus draft the first two rounds, at least for me. Yeah, you know, it's when players fall, there's always a reason. Mm -hmm. Like, players who fall tend to not do substantially better than other players picked at similar draft spots. But here's the thing about Howie Roseman that's just good, is Jeff Lurie, the owner of the Eagles, kind of just lets him do whatever he wants. And that kind of freedom is liberating because it means that you don't have to make these really ridiculous trades up to try and maximize value to save your job. Howie knows that as long as he keeps doing the right thing, he's going to be able to be around in Philadelphia for a long time. So when you get these opportunities to get pretty ridiculous deals trading down yeah. or relatively good deals trading up, you know, it doesn't always work, right? Like Jordan Davis, they gave up a ton to get him. And, you know, he's not terrible, but maybe not all you were hoping for. He's I'm good, just saying, he's like, good against the run. Yeah, no, indeed. But like with what they had to give to move up to 15 for him, right? They can't be super happy of how that turned out. But the point is just, even though he's not perfect, the fact that he can have that job security, like, like you say, he does sort of the obvious thing. But the reason other NFL GMs don't do the obvious thing isn't because they're stupid unless they're like Tom Telesco. <laughs> it's because they know that if they don't get their maximum value this year, they might be out the door. Mm -hmm. And And for Philly, you know, what scares me about these selections is... The problem last year, you know, the offense did falter, uh, but the defense really fell apart. And we've said so many times on this show how scary of a place it, Philadelphia was to go into. You know, you go into the link two years ago and that defense was going to shut you down. You're going to lose by 30. And yeah. it's just, you know, last year, just the wheels started to fall off uh, for the Eagles. If these guys can come in and, and you know, Mitchell will probably probably get to the point where he's starting. DeGene might even be a safety because now they have a lot that like the depth in the secondary is awesome now. Um but that D line, get that D line going again. That you know, have you have some young guys there now who are start who will be coming into their own. If the Philadelphia defense, if those young guys can can turn it on, I have no doubts that Hurts, AJ Brown, Saquon, and Devontae Smith are going to be able to to get going. All of a sudden, we could be looking up in week five or six, and Philly's you know, five and zero oh again. We're just going, oh geez, is this going to be another Super Bowl caliber season for Philly? And also, the the pick of the draft for them too. In round four, the uh, 32 year old Will Shipley. <laughs> I was waiting for him to, to finally get drafted. I guess this was the year. Will Shipley was a, uh, he's supposed to go to Notre Dame at one point. He was, uh, everyone thought he was going to go to the Irish. And then he, he backed off and went to Clemson. He was fine. I, I, th I thought Shipley was a, a fine. We never secure the bag. <laughs> yeah, we never. Oh, we never do. We never do.
But yeah, so th- there you go. The uh, the Eagles were my winner. And one more quick one I want to say. I actually do think that the Patriots are draft day winners. More so just be... And, and then you can look at their whole draft, but they did the right thing at three. And they took Drake May, the potential superstar. They could have they could have easily bit on all the bait and taken taken whatever trade the Vikings or the Giants were offering them. It looks like those were the two teams trying to trade up. But I really thought that passing on Drake May would have been something they could they would look back on in three years or two years even and go, what were we doing there? Build your team around the quarterback. Don't build your team and then find the quarterback. You need to have the guy before you can do anything. Uh, so I, I think I think they they were winners in my eyes just from actually picking the QB instead of waiting for another another few years. Yeah, I mean they were waiting to see if a team was going to offer them something truly truly ridiculous. You know, I think it's possible that the Raiders wanted to move up. It's certainly possible. Apparently, the Falcons were interested in quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so who knows? But they didn't get the offer they were looking for. They kind of like we're going to give you three first round picks, three second round picks. So I think they made the right choice. Would you have been upset if the Vikings had traded four first round picks? 11, 23 in the next two years for Drake May. Four first round picks is just a lot, especially when you can get a prospect who I think is substantially worse, but without giving up any future first round picks. Indeed, it was just one first round pick for J.J. McCarthy. So you ask me at the price, one first for J.J. or four first for Drake May. I'm probably taking my odds of J.J. McCarthy. Three is where I would have drawn the line. Okay. And I, I, my guess is that's where the Vikings drew the line, too. When are you guys getting your JJ to JJ gear? Oh, we you, you know we have it. I'll flash it up. We have that shirt on our store right now. We have do, a JJ to JJ shirt. Do we really? Look, I, Of course we do. Oh, yeah. I, I, on the Paul, on Paul Farrington Show. Oh, that's, I'm going to get that. That's fantastic. Yeah, on paulfarringtonshow.com right now. You could go over to our, our merch store and take a look. Let me see if I can pull this up here. JJ to JJ. J- oh, it comes in this really J- awesome purple. I like that. The little handshake in the middle. Yeah. It's uh, well, it, narrow, but. Oh, oh yeah. I thought yeah, it, it looks like a plane almost. I'd like to make it a football. We could get our graphic designer on that. But uh, yeah, we have a JJ to JJ shirt. JJ will oh. be wide open and JJ will miss him. <laughs> JJ on the left side, right, Ziggy? <laughs> Something like that. JJ wide open, underthrown. 